Welcome to Seeds by Sea. My name is Celia Murray and the purpose of this channel is to drop seeds of knowledge as it relates to faith, family, and finance. When I lived in the West Palm Beach area, I was a part of prison ministry. Saturday mornings, I would get up, go down to the correction facility. One particular Saturday morning, I decided I wasn't going to go. I was going to go out to lunch and go to the beach. I dress and everything. Got uh, started on my way, driving down uh, 95, headed towards the Fort Lauderdale area, when I realized that I was actually heading towards the prison. I said, Lord, you know I wasn't going there today. Why am I headed in that direction? I looked at my clock on my dashboard and I said, I'm going to be late. I can't even get there on time, Lord. And this is how I was speaking to him. This is how I talk. I'm going to be late, Lord. I'm not going to be able to get there on time. They, if you're late, you can't get in. I got there. I was about 15 minutes late. Got in the lobby. And I was surprised that all of the churches were still there. It was about six or seven churches. Um, I noticed that my church wasn't there. And so someone called and they said, Celia, we're waiting for you. We want you to do the prayer before we go upstairs. And I said, well, why are you guys still down here? It's like 20 minutes. You guys should have been upstairs already. They said they're training a new guard and something is going on with the system. So she hasn't processed us all yet. So come on so you can do the prayer. Got on the other side, did the prayer. After the prayer, I asked one of the other uh, members of another church, I said, can I go upstairs with you guys because my church isn't here? And they said, sure, so you can go up with us. One of the deputies said, we have another unit that has requested to have church service today. Who can go to that particular unit? Someone said, Celia will go. So I said, okay, I'll go. We go to the unit that we're assigned to and then we go up to the desk and we tell them to make the announcement that we're there. And I did that and the guard said, well, I don't think that anyone is gonna to come to service today because today is haircut day. I said, well, someone requested it, so I know I'm gonna have at least one person. You're in the general population. Uh, there's individuals in their rooms. Um, there's individuals that are watching television. There's a common area where we set up our table um, where we have service. This particular day, I asked the um, guard whether I could go into one of the private rooms. And he said, yeah. So I went into the private room. Um, it has a glass door. Um, there's a table and there are stacks of chairs. I took 10 chairs down, placed the chairs in a circle, sat in one of the chairs, and I began to pray. I said, Lord, you ordered my steps here today. There's someone that needs to hear from you. What is it that you will have me to say? Lord, bring the people. I continued to pray with my eyes closed. I began to sing. And as I began to sing, then I heard a knock on the glass. I opened my eyes and there were ladies standing there smiling at me with their Bibles, waiting for the guard to buzz them in. When they, when they came in, we had to take down extra chairs. I shared with the ladies, it was not in my plan to come there that day. I told them I was going to the beach. And since the Lord ordered my steps there, since someone prayed me there, that I know that God had a word for them. It was a powerful service to say the least. In Detroit, I was um, a volunteer at a youth homeless shelter. This one particular day I was sitting in the office and um, one of the residents, a tall young man, he appeared at the door. I said, what's going on? What's wrong? He said, Miss Murray, the holiday is coming up. Easter is coming up and everybody's gonna be with their families and we're gonna be in here. I felt what he was saying in my heart, but I had to keep my face straight. So I told him, I said, it's gonna be all right. I talked him through it. And then 
uh, one of the administrators came and I asked her, I said, can I cook dinner for the residents on Easter Sunday? So she said, let me check. Next day when I came, um, I knew that she would have an answer. To her office and I said, did you ask whether I could cook dinner for the youth? And she said, yeah, they approved it. Every time I would come, we would gather. Um, I would talk about scriptures and things of that nature. I told them, I said, guess what? I said, I'm going to cook dinner for you for Resurrection Sunday for Easter. They said, are you? And I said, what are you gonna cook? I said, a turkey and dressing, macaroni and cheese. They said, macaroni and cheese? I said, yeah. I said, we're gonna have candy yam, candy yams. Every time I named an item, they were getting more and more excited. So I kept throwing in items. I actually didn't know what I was gonna cook, but I kept adding stuff as they were getting excited. So they were like, well, you coming early? What time are you gonna come? And I said, well, no, I'm not coming early because I got to do Meals on Wheels before I come. They were so excited. When I was walking to my car, I realized for the first time that I didn't have any money to make this thing happen. I'm like, oh my God, I, didn't, I never thought that I didn't have the money to do it. I never thought about it. And I'm like, what am I going to do? I sat in my car in the parking lot of the homeless shelter and I said, Lord, I need you to show me how this is going to happen. He brought to my remembrance, my sister Jarita always has turkeys. I called her, still sitting there, Jarita, do you have any turkeys? She said, well, I don't have a turkey right now. I said, well, can you get a turkey? She said, well, what size turkey? I said, the biggest turkey you can get, get that. So she says, okay. Thought of mom Campbell. And um, I called her, I said, do you have that block of cheese that you normally keep in your freezer? She said, yeah, I have a block of cheese. I was just looking at it. I need some cinnamon. I need some nutmeg. Do you have any extra sugar? Do you have any, a block of butter? So I'm adding, she said, okay, wait a minute. Let me write all this stuff down. She said, okay, I got everything that you need. I called my friend who eats string beans out of the can, Erica. I said, Erica, do you have any string beans? She said, so you know I got string beans. I said, well, do you have about 20 cans of string beans? She said, no, I don't have 20 cans of string beans. I said, well, can you get 20 cans of string beans? She said, yes. I said, well, what about elbow noodles? Do you have any of those? She said, no. I, she said, but I can get them. I said, do you have any canned milk? She said, no, but I can get that too. How many do you need? So I told her. So I was excited. I drove home the next morning when I went to work. The receptionist who was there on a temporary basis, I greeted her as soon as I walked in the building and she was like, Sonny, what's going on? You're so excited. And I told her what was happening. She was like, well, I'm a professional caterer. I can cook everything for you. And I said, but you don't know where I live. I live a long way. She said, I don't care where you live. I'll come over to your house and I'll prepare all of the food. And I said, okay. Went up the stairs to my office. The word spread across the building about what I was doing. We had a store downstairs. Um, people were bringing up aluminum pans, aluminum foil. Some people were giving me money. Thing was happening so quickly. And I got to the point where I said, I don't need any more money. I got a call from the lobby. They said, Celia, there's a lady that's down here that wants to, to meet with you. And I said, I don't have any clients scheduled for today. It sent her up. She came up, we talked, and she said, well, why do you have all this stuff here? And I told her, and I said, after I leave work today, I'm gonna go down the street to Eastern Market and get some yams. Um, and she said, ma'am, I just bought a, a case of yams and they're in my car and you can come down and get as many as you want. Yeah. My grandson had a project at school where he had to do something to help others. Was he made candy bags for each one of the residents. He made 50 candy bags. When I went to go pick up the, the string beans and the elbow noodles and the milk, she said, she looked at me while I was standing in the doorway and she said, Celia, the Lord is telling me to give you $50. She handed me $50 and the items and I said, I don't know why he's telling you to give me $50. And then it hit me. I said, oh, I saw some Bibles at the Dollar Tree that I wanted to get the youth. Now I can buy the Bibles. Monique came over to my house. She cooked all the food. 
she cleaned up the kitchen. She took out the garbage. My grandson made the bag. Hills on Wheels on the holiday needs extra volunteers. So if you're not doing anything in on the holidays, early morning or the day before the holiday, consider volunteering with Meals on Wheels. Okay, getting back to the story. When I got to the youth shelter, I told them, I said, God loved you all so much that he provided people to make all of this happen. It was amazing. It was an amazing day. What God was showing me is that when you take one step, I will take the next step. I was in the market to buy a new recliner. I was looking online. I seen all these different uh, sales that was going on. Big Lot had a sale. It was only a couple of miles away. So I said, let me go up there and look at the chair that's on sale up there. So I saw the chair that was on sale, really didn't want it. I saw another chair that I wanted, but it wasn't on sale. And at Big Lot, you have to pay $100 for a delivery. I don't like that. I was gifted the $100. The next day, I went back up to Big Lot. And as I was pulling in the parking lot, I noticed a big U-Haul. I parked next to it and I prayed. I said, Lord, whoever is driving that U-Haul, let them take my recliner home for me. Thank you, Lord. And then I proceeded into Big Lot. When I went into the store, I noticed that the recliner that I really wanted, they had just marked it down. So I said, oh, I think I'm going to get this one because this is one I really wanted. But I went over to the other one and I sat in it while I was sitting there just, you know, trying to check it out. A gentleman came up and in front of me and he was talking to the salesperson behind me and he asked her, there's another there's some more recliners that's on sale. Where are they? She said, I'm not sure. They move stuff around in the store. I said, oh, I know where they are. So I took them over to the recliner that I was going to purchase. And I said, here, this is the other recliner. And he said, okay, I want two of those. I want that bedroom set over there. I want those lamps over there. I want two in tape. He was just buying up everything. And I said, excuse me. Are you driving that truck out there? He said, yes, I am. I said, oh, I said, look, I'm buying this recliner right here. Can you drop it off for me? He said, drop it off for you. I said, yeah, I don't live that far. You, can you drop that recliner off for me? He said, okay, $20. I said, oh, yeah, $20. I'll pay you $20. So I sat and I waited for him because he bought all this stuff. He said he just got a new house and he was trying to... Um, buy furnish it buy all this furniture so um i had a 20 percent off coupon i went up to the sales lady and i asked her can i use my coupon for his purchase it would save him at least six hundred dollars and it would have only saved me you know less than a hundred dollars so she said yeah you can use uh he can use your coupon and i said oh, okay and then she told him she's gonna use her coupon on your purchase. He said, thank you so much. When we surrender to Christ, when we allow him to be the head of our lives, when we rise early to pray, when we meditate on the word, the Lord will order our steps. The Bible tells us the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. If you're not a believer, if you're a backslider, I truly encourage you to get into a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. Iron sharpens iron. Surround yourself with other believers. That is it for now. Be encouraged no matter what it looks like. Be encouraged. God bless you. God keep you is my prayer and I'll see you soon.